everybody, welcome to the June 6th Raw Review, I guess I should say Raw Review slash uh, Tough Enough Finale, because they kind of melded into each other, which is, you know, super, super special. On a side note, I don't get Tough Enough here. I've been watching it from whoever I could find streaming it on YouTube every week, which meant long after it was on, and long after Raw was over, um... I've had to find it on YouTube, which meant last week it was spoiled to, to me that Jeremiah was uh, eliminated, which sucked, and uh, it was spoiled to me in the beginning of Raw this week that uh, that Andy was the winner, which also sucked. Um, so the uh, the two guys that I thought would have won, Jeremiah or Luke, made it to the top three, and then Andy beat both of them. Um, I'm kind of biased. You guys know I'm not a fan of uh, big guy wrestlers. I'm not saying he's not talented. I'm not gonna. I'm not saying he's not gonna make his his fair share, his fair contribution, or uh, anything like that. It's just you know, for me personally, I don't think I'm gonna be marking out for uh, Andy. I think his last name is Levine. Anytime soon. Um, but congratulations to him. Anyway, you know Austin and. Uh, Austin and McMahon had him in the ring in the beginning of Raw, and, uh, you know, had him and Luke out there and announced that basically Luke was, uh, Luke was eliminated, Andy was the winner, um, McMahon slaps him in the face as a congratulations, Austin gives him a stunner as a congratulations, and we sort of slowly form into Raw, with McMahon and Austin still in the ring, uh, R-Truth comes out in a, in a confederate uniform, which was weird says he's seceding from the WWE, but he'll still take that World Heavyweight title shot, or WWE title shot, at Capital Punishment. Oh, yes. Because the nutty guy continues to be nutty. Um, he gets mocked by Austin. He gets mocked by uh, McMahon, which is awesome. Um... He's interrupted by The Miz. Miz wants another title shot. He's then interrupted by Alex Riley, who goes and talks shit about The Miz. Who's then interrupted by Cena, who comes out and makes fun of all of them individually. And though I hate to admit it, it was opening segment clever for, uh, for Cena. And, you know, the ring is filling up, which means the general manager is going to ding in and make it a tag team match. And da 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 It's all very predictable and very cookie cutter, but as the general manager dings in and Michael Cole's about to read, we get from Vince McMahon, as only Vince McMahon can, Michael Cole, shut up! Which, you know, gets a big pop from the crowd and from me and from everybody else. But, nevertheless, the match is announced by McMahon. It's going to be Cena and Riley, which is, oh my god, are they going to get along? And our truth and The Miz with Austin to ref because you didn't know that was going to happen with him standing right there. So that's our main event for the evening. Excited to see everybody in the ring except Cena, as usual, but uh, but I'll get into that later. Um, first match of the night, we have uh, Santino versus Mike McGillicuddy from the Nexus, you know, sort of supposed to represent the fact that Santino and Vladimir Kozlov won another shot at the WWE Tag Team titles, because who else really holds them except for show and Kane and the Nexus. Um, if there's anybody that belongs permanently on uh, Superstars, I think it's uh, I think it's Santino Morella. Um, I know he means well, I know he's got good talent in the ring, but I can't I can't ever ever take him seriously. So um, Mike McGillicuddy gets a big high five from me right off the bat for making Santino Morella the points where Santino Morella looked really good in this match were because Mike McGillicuddy made him look good. Vladimir Kozlov on the outside bulldozes David Otunga, and Santino gets the win with the stupid fucking Cobra bullshit. The match is very blah, but Mike McGillicuddy looked decent. Um, looked sort of strong, mid-card, no-real-story type guy. Looks like he could be a really, really big guy on Superstars or something like that, if that if that's any bearing on, on my opinion. And the Blah matches continue with Kelly, Kelly, and Beth Phoenix taking on the Bellas to defend the honor of Karma, because Karma won't be with us for like a year, so 
they do a big recap of Karma's announcement of her pregnancy last week. They do the recap of the Bellas coming out and making fun of her and her saying she'll be back in a year. And we have a very, very blah, blah, blah WWE Divas tag team match. Except for, I will admit, a very brilliant, aggressive flurry from Beth Phoenix at the end. Beth Phoenix and Kelly Kelly get the win. Um... Not enough to save the match, in my opinion, but enough to resurrect my opinion of Beth Phoenix. Um, like I say, if, uh, if, uh, the hell, not Awesome Kong, she's not Awesome anymore, she's Karma. If Karma wasn't, um, taking time off to go do the family thing, and whatever, and good for her, I would be saying either Natalia or Beth Phoenix need to have a rivalry with her, rather than her just going around squashing the Barbie dolls. And maybe we try to get ODB into WWE. Yes, yes, yes. Actual fighters in the women's division. Yes. No, it's not going to happen. We know this. Uh, we go to a backstage segment. Because Tough Enough ended on Raw tonight, we have Booker T and Trish Stratus in the back doing a little bit of a comical bit. Booker T is going to teach Trish Stratus how to do the spin Rooney. Whatever, it's light, it's fun, and it's Trish Stratus on my screen, potentially bouncing around. I'm a happy kid, until they are interrupted by Swagger for no real reason, who comes out and challenges Booker T. So we're going to see Booker T in the ring later on tonight. Awesome! Something else we haven't seen in a while. Um, next we have uh, CM Punk and Rey Mysterio again. Uh, no, another great match. Uh, this time Rey Mysterio neutralizes the interference of... Uh, of uh, Mason Ryan by uh, kicking him in the face as he's Tornado DDTing CM Punk, which you know didn't look horrible and the match was was good and I'll talk I'll talk more about that later on. We have another mock press conference uh, promo for Capital Punishment. I'm sorry, last video I called it Capital Carnage, which is a video from '97 in the UK that I have. So whoever pointed it out to me. Last video, thank you very much. I'm sorry I don't remember your name at the moment. This entire uh, promo consists of our truth battling Barack Obama, which was probably more funny than it deserved to be. Alright. It's announced that next week is going to be a three hour Raw, WWE All Star Raw, which sounds impressive, except they don't actually tell us what that means. Alberto Del Rio comes out, replays the hit and run on the big show, and has. Um, Ricardo Rodriguez come out in a big stuffed wrestling outfit pretending to be the big show and he yells at him for a while. Very, very lackluster promo from Alberto Del Rio. Kind of disappointed, but whatever. We have a big promotional package for Kofi Kingston, so I think, and a uh, big vid package. You know, WWE, I've said it before, does the most amazing uh, highlight reel video packages of anything that I've ever seen, which consists of TNA, WCW, and WWE, but they do it the best. Um, on a side note, they're releasing uh, Best of WCW Nitro, which I will be grabbing, and if anybody cares, I will actually do my first DVD review on here, on that, if you guys want. Um, do a vi big vid package for Kofi Kingston, so I'm thinking, okay, he's going to have a title match with Dolph Ziggler for the US title, and it's going to be good, because that's what makes sense. Of course, that's not what happens. But Kofi Kingston gets to fight Zack Ryder. You heard me right. Zack Ryder had a match on Raw. Oh, yes. Um, Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero are on commentary. Kofi Kingston gets the win, obviously, because, you know, it's Zack Ryder. Um, I've lost my place. Miz versus Alex Riley has been announced for Capital Punishment, which is going to be good. Um... I'm actually hoping Alex Riley goes over in this match because I'm because the push they're putting behind him is working with not much effort because the fans want to cheer for him. So I hope he goes over. Yeah, that's about all I'm gonna say about that. Um, Swagger versus Booker T is a great match until Jack Swagger decides to walk away. Evan Bourne brings him back. Booker T and Evan Bourne double team him with a scissor kick and the airborne, which looks incredible as usual and Swagger walked away looking like an idiot. Main event, like I said, uh, everybody in the match, including the referee, I wanted to see, except for John Cena, who tries to Superman through most of the match, and when he's not in the match, everybody else looks golden. Miz, R-Truth, and Alex Riley equally. Um, 
a briefcase to the head, a stunner, and an attitude adjustment on uh, Miz gets the win. But the GM dings through much like at WrestleMania and says, hey, Austin interfered too much and we're going to reverse the decision. So Miz and R-Truth actually won, which I'm not really sad about either because I like both of them. Um, but then the, Aust the general manager dings through again and says, for the three-hour Raw, next week Austin's going to be the guest general manager. So you're like, hmm. So we end off for no particular reason at all with a stunner and an attitude adjustment on Cole, which makes everybody happy. That is the end of Raw. Sorry if I'm, uh, there's not as much stuff that excited me about this Raw, so you'll excuse me if, uh, going through it rather quickly, but I am still, as usual, going to go with the stories, the fails, and the MVPs. MVP. There's only one. Um, scores are first, as usual. I don't care who else is in the ring, I don't care why they're in the ring, I don't care what the hell else is going on. Anytime you get Austin and McMahon in the ring together doing promo work or doing any kind of build to anything, it's always awesome. So, greatest way to start off Raw ever. There's nobody... There are single people that can get up there and do a great promo to open up the show. As far as a pairing, it's gotta be Austin and McMahon. Like, there's no other... There's no other pairing that can do it. So... Uh, Big Andy, who won the, who won Tough Enough, and uh, and uh, I'm not exactly a fan of it, but he's already got his own t-shirt. You saw him out there with his tuxedo, and he takes his tuxedo jacket off, and it's Silent Rage t-shirt. Uh, yeah. It's cool that he had a shirt made for the occasion, and yeah. Um, Rey Mysterio and CM Punk, although I said last week that this rivalry is being ground into the ground, I went at it a bit more objectively this week. Um, Rey Mysterio and CM Punk can have matches over and over and over again, and they're still very watchable. Um, they still can hold your interest, they still can pull out a new thing every now and then, so credit to them for that, for being the same old, same old, except not feeling that way. Um, Zack Ryder had a match on Raw. <laughs> um, you know, as opposed to him uh, hanging out on YouTube and fist pumping behind John Cena, which... Eh. Don't be pumping anything behind John Cena. That's just bad news. Um, he had a match, and this is actually a two-part, uh, two-part score because not only did Ryder have a match, the fact that Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero were on commentary leads you to believe, obviously, that somebody was going to get screwed over somewhere, and it wasn't. It was a clean win by Kofi over Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder looked all right in the match. Dolph Ziggler and Vicky Guerrero did their spiel on commentary, and there wasn't any bullshit, which is nice and refreshing, isn't it? Um, double spin a Rooney by uh, Booker T and Evan Bourne after the Swagger match gets the last score for this week. Ah, the fails. I like seeing Austin as a special guest referee. He is, like, the guy to be special guest referee. But last week we saw Christian as a special referee on SmackDown, and two weeks ago we saw Bret Hart being the special guest referee on Raw when he screwed over uh, CM Punk, I believe. And uh, not to say that it's not fun when they do it, but when they do it three weeks in a row, it gets stale. Um, I'm going to put a fail to the a and Cena pairing tonight. They're giving Alex Riley this amazing push, but to pair him with John Cena, who they know at least half of their crowd hates, has to hamper the crowd's excitement about Alex Riley. Not only that, but even as his partner, John Cena is going to sit there beside him and try to be Superman, which is like a squash, and you shouldn't get a squash from your tag team partner. That's not cool. Um, Santino Morella and Vladimir Kozlov need to leave the tag team picture. They need to get new tag... If they're ever going to revitalize the tag team division, they have to get Santino and Vladimir Kozlov as far away from it as possible. My opinion. The Bellas are trying too hard to be heels, and it's not working, and they need to stop. Um, general Manager needs to make up his mind. Um, in the very last segment of the show, in almost the same breath, he puts down what Austin did as a referee over here, but at the same time says, hey, because you were such a bad referee, I'm going to let you general manage Raw next week. There's no continuity in that whatsoever, and if anybody can point out some continuity in it that I don't see, feel free to do it. The box is down there for a reason. Um, the season finale of Tough Enough, I know it's not technically part of Raw, but I'm going to put a fail on here anyway. They built up a lot of 
hype in last week's show for the fact that these guys were both going to get to have a match in FCW, and that was going to be their last challenge. And they didn't show them as two matches, which I wish they had. They showed it as sort of a video, music video, vignette, highlight reel package thing, which doesn't give you the true impact of what they did in the ring from bell to bell. So as a viewing member of the Tough Enough audience, I feel I was slighted on that. Oh, yes. And the wrong guy won, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so that's a fail, too. Last but not least, you have, you started off your show with Austin and Mr. McMahon, and it did not end with Mr. McMahon getting a stunner. That's a fail. That is an uncapped show. That is an uncapped show. Fail. Um, MVP of the week, I know it was my MVP at least once before already, but it's got to go to Alex Riley again, just his, the way he's handling his push, and the way it's going so naturally, and the way the crowd is just picking it up, like, uh, I don't know, I can't even come up with a good metaphor right now, but they're, uh, the crowd is eating it up, and it's coming so naturally that the WWE doesn't have to push it, and he's enjoying it, and he's getting better as his reception gets better, and I think it's just amazing. Anyways, that is my review for June 6th, Tough Enough finale and Monday Night Raw. You know the deal. I've been Spaz. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Let me know what you think. Start a conversation and I will talk to you later. Get up, come on.